Hello, hello, internet land. I'm not even set up at all, am I? It is Sif Dominic Hawkins here, coming to you live from my house. <laughs> On Wednesday, the 5th of August, 2020, for our Wednesday night hosting den meditation session. I'm going to pretend that I'm only in a forest. There we go. Ish. Hey. Ah, 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 the corners. So I hope you're well. I am not at the dojo tonight because it is freezing cold and <laughs> at home instead wrapped up uh, and having a, a lovely warm time. I hope that you're all well. I'm just going through setting up. Should have done this before. Apologies. I'll give a few minutes just to let everyone um, else join us, those who are joining us tonight. Yes, I hope it's been a good week <laughs> and, um, and that you are warm, keeping warm. We had some beautiful days and now uh, just a little bit crispy. The evenings have become again, but I'm sure that we're on our way to springtime, slowly and surely. Uh, but Friday was really fun. I really enjoyed the Friday philosophy talk uh, last week and, um, and had promised that we were moving on tonight to uh, pick up some momentum in our meditation work. So I said last week that, you know, we've been chugging along just quite consistently and slowly. I wonder what's up with my hair tonight. Um, consistently and slowly as we, as I kind of allowed some of the, um, the new students to catch up and uh, gave a whole bunch of you guys some time to, maybe you had only watched half the videos, maybe you're a regular student, but uh, you've been very busy you know, uh, growing all your own food and quickly trying to be able to survive the next millennium uh, and unable to watch the Wednesday sessions. <laughs> so we'll just assume that now everyone's up to board, <clears throat> whether or not that's, you know, realistic. So tonight, what I want to work on, we're going to go through our five uh, sense organs observation again, really quickly. That's like a good warm up. We pretty much do that every session. And then we'll plow straight into our um, breath work, our in our breath observation we can hold the breath and then watch the heart beat and then the rhythm of the heart and then move some of the pulsing of the heart and then I want to move uh, beyond that into some of the microcosmic orbit. So I was talking on Friday night when I was doing sort of like part two of the discussion about um, Dr. Glenn Morris and the original Hoshinru, the Hoshinoshi Rujitaijutsu that he started and how the focus of that, the focus of Hoshin has always been from Glenn's presentation, um, the development of the human being and the achievement of a process called enlightenment that he he would coin as being a, um, a biological experience. So he would um, he would often he comment, especially in his writing and his works, that enlightenment is the process of connecting the groin to the head and connecting the sexual energy to the brain and use that kind of um, body energy for thinking it's really interesting radical idea <laughs> fun so um, we want to get more into that and I, I talked on friday about the lesser kind Lee, the microcosmic orbit and the greater kind Lee, so the actual kundalini experience and um, and the meditations that we do on the wednesday night what we've been doing has all been about building a kind of a language and a method and, and an ability to, or a reference rather, um, to be able to know what it is that we're looking for in these experiences, observing sensation change in the body, and be able to um, follow along in the talks and in the discussions. And so in meditation experiences and meditation centers or practices, you know, you could go to a Zen temple, and you could sit down and you could take part in the meditation process with that, that basic, basic understanding. Just the ability to be able to actually know what it is you're honing in on and reflect on how it is that you listen, how it is that you smell and taste and see and feel. So without further ado, uh, we've got an hour tonight. You can be seated, you can be lying down, you can be standing, you can be running, you can be working, whatever. Uh, I just hope that you're able to um, divide your attention enough to focus on the observation. If you're new to this, I recommend having some space from other things so that you can practice it. If you've been doing this for ages, well then, you know, a good activity would be actually to have some distraction in the background. 
and still watch yourself be able to go through that. So even while the kids are screaming at you in the background about their homeschooling work, <laughs> not, I, I don't draw that from any personal experience, I can tell you, um, <clears throat> but you could still actually reach beyond the, the sounds that are in the immediate room into the outside space. That's a, that's a hell of a practice. <laughs> Good luck with that. So settling in, let's start off with the audible sensation. As you breathe in through the nose, down into the belly, and now through the mouth, tongue sits on the roof of the mouth, behind the top two front teeth. Be relaxed with the tongue. Have the tongue there on the inward breath. And if it's hard, just chill the tongue out on the outward breath. You know, you don't have to get this like perfect structure. Uh, there are no methods, as was famously sort of coined. Um, that was Gurdjieff, maybe. Maybe, who said that? Oh, I'm completely wrong. Anyway, uh, this so there are no there are no methods, and tonight's particular method <laughs> is just taken right out of the book of um, of Mahayana and and Buddhism, the Vipassana book. So Zen styles of meditation. All right, as you breathe in and out in through your nose, down into your belly, and it stretches the muscles around your ribs, stretches the muscles in the chest, opens up the chest. Changes the shape of the head. Oh, it makes you sleepy. Ooh, ooh. Pardon me. <laughs> it's must a hell of a breath just then. I want you to allow the breath to shape the form and shape the body. So if you find that you're having inward breaths and that they're they're adjusting the shape of your torso or adjusting the shape of your your um, the way your shoulders sit on your spine, I want you to just allow that to be so that the breath adjusts the form and then on the outward breath it just kind of sits in the new adjustment don't don't force yourself back into um, what you used to be or what you think is the correct you know more spiritual looking posture so as you breathe in now really stretching the muscles in the ribs and the belly and take your attention to the sounds that you can hear far outside of this space It's eerie these days, there aren't cars on the street <laughs> that I used to be able to listen to, but there are still some sounds. I can still hear things, you know, there's some kind of shop, or some kind of commercial premises. I can hear the humming of something, it sounds like refrigerators down the street, quite loud. I can hear an aeroplane, of all things. What can you hear outside of your space as you breathe in and out? One more breath. Okay, now drawing your attention closer into the room. As you're breathing in and out, what can you, what can you hear, <laughs> I was about to say smell, what can you hear in the room around you, in the space around you? As you breathe in and out, is your breath suddenly highlighted? I can hear the crinkling of my clothing as my breath moves my form slightly. And the loudness of my breath, my exhalation is so loud seems to cut out any of the sounds of outside. One more breath, in through the nose, down into the belly. What can you hear? Oh, wow. Man, homeschooling is finishing me off. Okay, now we're going to take our attention to the sounds we can hear right at the eardrum. So we're listening to the sound of ourselves listening. Off we go. Listening to the sound of yourself listening.
such a curious sensation, that one. It was like being, at the same time, boxed into this small area and yet not uh, dwelling in this space at the same time. Okay, now we're going to move on to the sense of smell, the olfactory sense. So we're breathing in and out. And now through the mouth. So obviously smell tends to be activated on the inward breath. So what can you smell? This is the question. What can you smell in the space around you, in the room around you? One more breath. What can you smell? Did you notice how it started off as nothing, then something, and then maybe it became more subtly refined? Possibly. Now I want you to observe the question, what can you smell very close to you? What can you smell within 10 centimetres of your, of your body? Off you go. Eyes open or closed. Interesting, it's different, isn't it? One more breath. All right, now taking the attention inside the nostrils themselves. Can you smell at the point of smelling? Eyes open or closed. All right, now we're going to move on to the sense of taste, the tasting sense. So I'm going to begin off, begin by, start off, begin off, oh, start off by tasting, what can you taste in the room around you? What are the aromas and the fragrances in the space? Now the tasting sensation usually is heightened on the outward breath. So you're going to breathe in through the nose, down into the belly. Then you're going to breathe out through the mouth, slowly or through the nose, tasting. What can you taste in the surrounding air in the environment? Own the sense of observation onto taste. As you breathe in and breathe out, tasting. And I want you to taste the air. And observe the taste sensation. One more breath at that level. All right, now we're going to move the taste observation to inside the mouth. So I want you to see what you can taste on the inside of the mouth. Off we go, we'll do three breaths for this one. So breathing through the nose. You might want to breathe out through the nose for this. What can you taste inside the mouth cavity? And there will be subtle flavors and sensations breathing in and out again maybe it's dinner or breakfast and last one Okay, now moving the observation to the tongue itself. I want you to taste at the point of tasting. Tasting the taste buds on the tongue. Off we go. Tasting the tongue.
Sometimes it feels like you suddenly have a numb tongue or like a, a fat tongue or something like that. Going again, breathing right now. And the last one. Tasting the tongue. Now I don't want you to be thinking about your toes too much, so come back to your face. What we're going to do is now we're going to move on to the experience of sight, because I want to use the um, experience of touch uh, as the last one. So you can have your eyes open or closed. If they're open, you're staring out into oblivion, just like how we've done this for the last 15, 16 sessions, and you're interested in staring beyond the objects, so your entire peripheral vision uh, comes into, into play. If your eyes are closed, staring out beyond the inside of the eyelid. So just, you know, in hypothetical terms, your focus isn't fixated on the back of the eyelid. You're staring beyond the flesh, beyond the pictures, beyond the projections of shapes and geometry. Off we go. Three breaths. Just observing sight. Breathing through the nose. Out through the mouth. Breathing in, my hiccups then, palsy. Breathing in and out. Third breath, in and out. Now I want you to change the focus of your observation to so something very close. Maybe you have your hand up in front of your face, or if your eyes are closed, you're looking directly at the inside of the eyelids. That one's probably easier. You'd probably find that the one with your eyes open in the hand, because it gets to the point where your vision blurs, it can be very straining on the eye muscles for a few seconds. It's up to you if you want to continue that with the eyes closed. Otherwise, you're looking at the inside of the eyelid. Off we go. Three breath cycles. What can you see when you're looking at that level? In through the nose, out through the mouth. Now moving on to the last of the levels with vision, eyes open or closed. I want you to look out but at the tissue. So I want you to see the seeing organ. Just like we were hearing the eardrum and we were smelling the smell receptor, tasting the taste buds. This is our interest in Seeing the tissue of the eye, seeing the sight organ itself. Breathing in and out. And don't be too surprised if you have strange hallucinogenic kind of experiences. And maybe, maybe they are things like vertigo or certain experiences. Uh, perceptual experiences of the body, spatial perception changes. What you're asking the brain to do is, if you're new to this, is very, very tricky. Something it's not used to doing. Oh, 
All right, and then just relaxing the perception of vision. Now we're going to move on to the experience, the sensation of experiences of touch in the tactile sense. So, you know what my usual rhetoric for this is. If you are uh, sitting or standing or lying down or jumping or paragliding, free falling, <laughs> that last one probably won't work. I want you to pick an aspect, an area of your body that is in contact with the ground, that is, um, that is in contact in such a way that you can feel a sense of pressure on the ground or where the, where the body meets the ground. So I'm sitting in a chair today, um, my feet are on the ground, so I can feel immediately with just a little moment of looking at my body mentally, I can feel pressure sensations in the feet, mainly in my heels, the balls of my toes, the balls of my feet, sorry, in my toes. Um, I can feel it in my buttocks, backside, and my arm, I'm resting on the, uh, there's a armrest here. So I've got these, these three main key areas. You have to pick whatever it is that is in contact with the ground for you. This experience of pressure. We're going to just start with that textural pressure experience. Breathing in and out. I just want you to look mentally at that experience. As you breathe in through your nose, down into your belly. And one more full breath cycle. Now, we're going to move on to the next layer of observation with the tactile sense. We're going to observe the tissue itself. So we're interested in the experience of where the tissue has a response from its interaction with something. Clothing or a shoe or a carpet or the ground, you know. If you were barefoot uh, and there's floorboards on the ground or it's like the bottom of the soles of your feet where they meet the floorboards, etc. So I want you to really decide now, in the next one or two breaths, and hone in on a very particular spot, no bigger than a five cent piece. And we're interested not in the experience of pressure, but the actual tissue sensation of the skin where it, where, that you've chosen to observe. Off we go, breathing through the nose, down into the belly. Now through the mouth, and in and out, Okay, so hopefully you were able to experience some kind of sensation of the nervous system feedback in that area. So maybe tingling or uh, like a buzzing sensation or, or throbbing or something like that. Something differentiated in much more detail than the overall sense of pressure. And now we're going to move on to the actual sensation of the, f the nerves in the tissue in relationship to something that it's feeling or touching. So just like we were listening to the eardrum. We were smelling smell receptors. We were tasting the taste buds. We were seeing the eye, the cones, the rods, seeing the vision uh, organ. Now we are feeling the nerves in the skin. This can be incredibly difficult to differentiate. <laughs> so I just want you to again hone in on somewhere, maybe a five cent piece in, in size. Five cent piece. That's it. Five cent piece, and just observe. Off we go. Breathing in and out.
And final breath in and out. All right, and then just resting there, relax the focus on any of the five senses. So, give a thumbs up in the post if you were able to experience some of the differences in your level of focus. So, you were listening to sounds outside, then you became highly aware of the sounds inside, and then you became strangely aware of this cognitive issue of listening to the eardrum. You know, if, if you were able to to experience these separating, sorry, these separate layers, almost lenses of experience. Fantastic, you know, put a thumbs up in the, in the post, in the comment. Be, it's always good to see. What we're gonna move on to tonight, I'll just check the time. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we're halfway through, wow, that flew. What we're gonna move on to tonight now is moving into the breath, the actual experience of breath, and then observing the heartbeat. So with our, experiences I'm all shuffled out hopefully you're already ready for the next half hour breathing in and out <sighs> okay we're just going to get into the habit of or into the vibe rather of just focusing the five senses on to the breath experience itself so you could start off with sound if if that's an easy one for you you can start off by listening to the breathing. And then I want you to start smelling the breath. And I want you to start tasting the breath. I want you to start feeling the sensation of the breath, the skin texture. And on the inside of the throat. As the breath passes through the inside of the throat. Now I want you to focus on the experience of the breath on the inside of the body. What can you find? What kind of sensation, sensational experiences uh, are available for you with the breath on the inside of the body? I'm going to do one more full breath cycle. And in. And hold the breath. And don't move. And breathing it out. And go back to your normal cycles of breath. And just remember what other things became super heightened for you at that moment when you were holding your breath. Which of the other sensations suddenly came rushing in to the forefront of your observation while you were holding your breath. We're going to do another few breath cycles. And this time, when we hold our breath, I'll direct you through it. We're going to be interested in observing, can we find our heartbeat? Any experience of our heartbeat, whether it's a pulse in like a peripheral part of the body or the actual beating of the heart in the chest or maybe what seems like the sound of the heart beating, whatever it is. 
So we're just breathing in a few cycles, breathing in and out. Katie guys. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> One more breath in and holding the breath and now curious about the heartbeat. Can you observe the heart beating? Maybe you can hear it and feel the tactile sense of the pulse through the body. Maybe the pulsing of your blood affects your vision and you get flashes in time with the rhythm. Relaxing your breath. Hold a couple of normal breaths. And breathing in again. And hold the breath. And watch the heartbeat. Relaxing your breath and chilling out your breathing rhythm. That activity can be really useful, just as a side bonus, city kind of fun, of uh, extending your, your ability to hold your breath uh, without this kind of panic, you know, just extending the breath. What I always find is when I, when I am able to still the breath and then observe the body, through the different sense organs. I pick up the heart first, that starts, and then the beating of the heart, and I start to hear it in my ears, you know, and it's pulsing behind my eyes, and then and then this sense of swaying rhythm starts to come over me, as if the, the heartbeat is suddenly really viscerally moving, it has this sense of it viscerally moving my body. And then what I find is I start to become very aware of areas of tension all through my body, really specific things that I'm not necessarily aware of while I'm just in the day-to-day -day process of my breathing. Um, just different, sudden, strange things, you know, a little strange bit of bruising sensation in the, the left knee or, or a little bit of tension on the um, you know, back of my shoulder blades. So just these interesting little bits of information. It's all about information. Huh? So now as we breathe in and out, just relax. What we're gonna be interested in doing now is moving into part of the microcosmic orbit, yeah? part of the lesser kind of rhythm. So we're just gonna begin by breathing. And as we breathe, we're gonna start with a sensation on the face. I don't particularly mind, I don't care, whatever it is you wanna observe, some kind of tactile sensation on the face. So maybe, maybe tingling on the end of your nose or your cheeks or something in your tongue or, or um, a sensation behind your eyelids, but something facial, off you go. Just take a few moments, few breaths to really, Build the volume of that focus, yeah? Okay, and now what we're going to do is as we breathe in, a full breath in, focusing on the face. On the outward breath, I'm going to get you to draw a little imaginary line, like a pencil, all the way down your body to your feet. So big breath in. And breathing out, I want you to melt the sensation down your body, down past your hips, legs, past your knees, down your shins and calves and your feet, your heels, and into your feet, the balls of your feet, the pads. And now just, so the inward breath occurs when you're at your feet mentally, breathing in and out. So 
from one's population. Okay, now we're going to breathe in and on the outward breath, we're going to do the reverse. We're going to travel up the body. So I want you to start by finding some sense of observation in the feet, some sensation, maybe tingling, yeah, maybe blood pulsing, whatever it is. I want you to, I'll give you two breaths to do that. Off we go. Some sensation in the feet, any sensation in the feet. Okay, now we're going to breathe in. And now breathing out, drawing that sensation up through the body, through the legs, the knees, through the legs, observing up past the hips, yeah, the belly, the abdomen, the torso, through the chest, shoulders, through the neck tongue, throat, and up through the skull to the front of the face, so that the inward breath occurs at the face. And just take a few moments in your breath and refocus on the face. Again, exploring sensation of the face. Even just then I got momentarily distracted for a few seconds by a random memory of last month in Japan. <laughs> Bring it back, sense of practice, back to observation of the face. Happens to the best of us, yeah. Alright, now we're gonna have one more big breath in. And breathing out, we're gonna draw down the sensation from the face, down through the body through the center line of the body and down the feet, down to the feet, and then breathing in again at the feet. All right. Now, often the lesser Lee, the microcosmic orbit is run between the top of the head and the perineum, so right underneath the torso. We're going to just run a little cycle through the feet, between the top of the head and the feet. So rather than having a few breaths at each position and pausing, what we're going to do now is we're going to just constantly cycle between them. So at one point I'm breathing and I'm traveling maybe down the body and then I'm breathing in and I'm traveling up the body. And then I'm breathing out and I'm traveling down and I'm breathing in and I'm breathing traveling up or vice versa, whatever it is, however it is you want that to happen. So you choose, start at the feet or the face, and we're going to be breathing in and out. And I want you to just feel this melting sensation. Down, 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 down. All the way down. And as you're breathing in, sorry, I'm distracted. As you're breathing in, then you're breathing up. And you're just going to continue this cycle, so it's up and down. So all of a sudden I can feel my feet, and now I'm about to breathe in again. Jumping up now I can feel my face, I'm about to breathe out again, so I draw down the body. I can feel my feet again, breathing in again. Drawing out the body, I can feel my face, breathing out again, and I can feel my feet, breathing in again, 
Walking through my face. Breathing out again. Again, feel the feet and just continue this cycle. I'll give you a couple more breaths. We'll just cycle through this constantly rotating orbit. Off we go. You still running the orbit or did you get distracted? <laughs> Breathing in and out. Feeling the tingling in the face, drawing down the body, feeling the tingling in the face. Drawing up, feeling the tingling in the face. And drawing down, feeling the tingling in the feet. And drawing up, tingling in the face. On the top of the head, top to the knee, and down to the feet, and up, and down,
and just relaxing and resting. Check the time. So we've still got some time. Now, that process, that's the beginning of microcosmic orbit. We haven't, there's more that we can do. That's the beginning of it. And hopefully you find that it fills you with a sense of calm <laughs> and areas of your body are not kind of lit up yeah, your feet and your face primarily, maybe, um, maybe your hands, maybe some of your uh, intermediary, like your torso, your thighs, your legs, are maybe kind of filled up with this, this experience. And there's some kind of vibration, there's like a, whether it's always been there and your observation is heightened, or whether it's, um, it's like an increased experience of cellular vibration, there is just something kind of stilling and, and quieting about that experience. An awesome experience. So that's that's the beginning of the microcosmic orbit. And we're going to continue with that next week. Between now and next week, I highly recommend practicing that. And so you go through the steps that we did. You can start off in any of these sessions if you if you kind of need some guidance. Not quite like a guided meditation, but you know, to that effect. Start off with the five senses and go through the sense observation meditations. And that will really just bring you to the experience and orient you to the experience of the surrounding externally. And then use that to step into the experience of the internal present happening. And then from there you can begin on the, on the sense organs and then you can begin exploring the sensations of the body in this um, in this way in this spiraling rotating orbital way now I highly recommend jump on Google and type in Qigong CHI um, or Q-I-G-O-N-G C-H-I-K-U-N-G either of those spelling uh, and microcosmic orbit and I sure that you'll find just tons and pages and pages and pages of stuff some of it will be fantastic some of it will be absolute crap you're just going to have to filter through and uh, and do some reading and explore and be interested in the history and and uh, some of the the discussions you know you might find usually what you find is there's whole forums whole groups and gatherings of people who are qigong practitioners uh, and breathwork practitioners and um and they often have dialogues and forums that you can join some of them free i'm sure there's forums you know on facebook for example qigong forums so what we're doing are forms of qigong if you already study qigong then this will be kind of you'll be like oh yeah i already know all this why is it taking so long to get to the point um why is it taking 16 sessions to get to this step we just it's it's like qigong for people who don't know what qigong is <laughs> and uh, and you know it's nice to have some clear-cut methods to um, to make your way there. So I hope you've had an enjoyable time. I'm certainly feeling quite <laughs> quite relaxed and all the yawning I did during the session. Have a good week, and I will see you on Friday. Now this Friday, uh, I don't. I'm, I was hoping to have an interview with one of my teachers. Um, I don't know if that's going to actually. I'm going to get that recorded before now and then with everything going on, but we shall see. It'll either be a cool pre-recorded pretend live thing or an actual live thing with me on Friday night. Um, and then I'll, so I'll just continue with the vein of my lectures and, and um, dialogue, well, it's not dialogue, discourses, monologue <laughs> from before. Have a good week and enjoy Wednesday night and Thursday and Friday and I'll see you Friday night. All the best.